In this video, we're going to go over how to graph exponential and logarithmic functions. So there are a couple of steps needed to graph the exponential and logarithmic functions. First, you're going to have to table the parent function. That's going to be, um, for example, if the... Um, I'm going to write this down first. If the entire function is like... 1 fourth x minus 1 or something like that, the parent function would just be this, just be 1 fourth x. And the next step is to make a new table with the transformations applied to the parent function. So in this case, for um, the table of the parent function of x and y values. And I'm just use the same function over here. Um, instead of it being x over here, you make a new table that um, makes x the x minus 1, while the y stays the same, because the transformation over here is x minus 1. Or just, yeah. And after that, you graph the points that are inside the transform table. All right, so we're going to go over an example that graphs uh, an exponential function. So the f of x equals negative look, um, 1 half to the power of negative x minus 3. So the first step is to t make a table for the parent function. And in this case, the parent function will be 1 half to the x. Because it is the function that removes all the reflections, all the translations, and all that stuff. So when we make um, a table for the parent function, we could give some values like this. And we input the x values into the parent function to give out these values. And this is our main graph, or this is our parent function graph. Now, when we look at our transformed graph, or the graph that we were given, we can see that there's a negative translation in the x, and there's a um, negative, or there's a negative reflection in the x and also in the y. And here's the tricky part, because when we look at the, when we um, change the translation into the graph, um, what we want to do is to visualize what the um, what this translation does to the graph. So it's minus three, so it brings the graph down. So e so the every y value will go down three, and for every x value here. We're gonna turn it. We're gonna multiply by negative one by give because of the negative here. So a negative two would be a two. Negative one would be one, and so on. And in this case, the y becomes negative y minus three. And the reason why the uh, negative doesn't uh, incorporate the three as well is because of PEMDAS. So multiplication multiplication comes before. Um, subtraction and that is why it stays negative 3 and this is um, it stays negative y minus negative 3 instead of negative y of the quantity of y plus 3 so when we um, apply this transformation to these values here we're gonna get negative 7 negative 5 negative 4 negative 3.5 or I'll convert into, I'll turn to fraction form, negative one half. This will be negative three, three, four, three, um, three and one quarters. And this will be negative three and one eighth. So right now we could graph it. And now we could use the pairs in this transform table and plug it into this graph. Uh, I'm gonna, um, we have to, I think the gloss won't affect the graph, so we should be good. 
So it'll be 2, negative 7, 2, yeah. 1, negative 5, 0, negative 4, negative 1, 3 quarters, negative 2, 3, and so on. So what you can see here is that whatever this value is, that would affect the that would affect the horizontal asymptote. So these originally the without that the exponential function will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So when you subtract three from that, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals negative three. And with that, we could connect the dots to form the exponential function. All right, now we're going to solve a problem that requires graphing a, logarith a, logarithmic, a logarithmic function. So, wait. It'll be f of x equals 4 plus log of x minus 3. If it's a, because there's nothing in the base, this is um, a natural log, so it technically be log of 10. And with this, the base function, without the transformations, it would just be, um, I'll set it to y, y equals log of x. And we could make a chart, I'm going to put it this way of the values of log of x. So, yeah. And you get these values when you plug this inside the parent function over here. And now we could apply the transformations onto a new table. So in this case, um, because um, the x, it, this part is x minus 3, um, in transformations that shifts the graph right 3, and if it's plus 4, it shifts the graph up 4. So what this does to the actual values in the graph is that x increases by 3, and y increases by 4. So the trippy part is usually, when you look at it, it looks like it's going to go to the left 3, but in the formula, it's x minus h. And since h is technically positive in the equation, it this part just makes it look negative. Um, if it has a negative here, then this value is positive, so it goes to the right. So we could change these values. This would be 6, and this would be 13. And we could fill this part in. All right. With the graph complete, we can now graph the, or the table complete, we can now graph the function. All right. So when we look at this part where it says um, undefined, um, in this case, that is the vertical asymptote because that's, in, in the original log function, that is like, I'm going to do it up here, it's like this. This part is the vertical asymptote because no, n you can't put a negative value inside a log and get a valid answer. So in this case, the this asymptote is shifted to the left by three units. So the vertical asymptote is at x equals ne x equals three, and that is shown here where when we plug in three, uh, the value is undefined. Uh, also, um, it sh becomes undefined when it when x is zero or lower. So uh, with this, we could plug the rest of the values in. And, ooh, 13, that'd be, that would just be some, that'll be like around here, just for the sake of showing it. And, yeah, that's our graph.